So you're interested in live streaming, but you want SDI cards and these capture cards are very expensive just for one input. What if I told you there's a capture card made by Blackmagic that takes in SDI, but it actually takes in four inputs. That is the Decklink Duo 2. I'm gonna open this up, put it in the system behind me, show you how to get it all set up and tell you about some tips that will help you get this finicky card configured. So let's go. Hey folks, AJ the CEO here with the first time stopping by the channel. Thanks for stopping by and on this channel. We focus on tips, training, strategies, reviews, and bills to help modernize your media ministry. So if you're new here, consider subscribing. And if you like what we're doing here, consider becoming a patient or a YouTube member by clicking one of the links down below. Now, in full disclosure, I paid for this with my own money twice. I built the system just like the one behind me for a ministry, and um, I ended up getting it twice. So this is another system that I built with this card. So this is, gives me an opportunity to actually review this card. So let's go ahead and open it up. I'm not going to do a top down or anything like that because I got a computer on that desk. So inside of here, now the market price for this um, US is $495. Now that is expensive, but you have to realize what you're getting with something like this. This is a um, SDI capture card that actually has four inputs. So let's go ahead and open this up. And this uses a PCIe um, X4, 4X, whatever you call it, um, slot. So if you're looking at putting this in one of your systems, make sure that the PCI, PCIe slot is a four. That's where you can put this in. The two, I mean, excuse me, not the two, but the one is too small for this. Um, and it can go anything higher than that. So if you got a 16 slot or an eight slot, it will work inside of this. But as you see, we have four independent inputs and one of these is also an output. Now, one of the problems with this, and I'll go over it when you configure this, is these are linked so that it can take in and send out. All of these can be addressed, but by default, two of these, two sets of these are linked together. So, and it's weird how they do it. I think it's like one, three, two, four, and it's linked or something like that. And another one is output. The other tip before I even start getting into this, if you get one of these cars, and I've done this on the Intensity Pro, they don't label these. So I would actually get like a small kind of like sticker and label each input, like put a one or out or something like that, a O or something so that if anybody comes behind you, they'll know exactly how to use it. Again, doesn't require any power, anything like that. You just slide the card in and that's it. So I got this system behind me that I just built. I'm gonna go ahead and put this in and walk you through the whole installation of everything, how to get it hooked up. Pretty straightforward, except for I had a little issue. <laughs> we got caught up on the cable when I was inserting the, the card. But let's go ahead and cut over to the computer and let me show you exactly how to get everything configured and installed. All right, so we're now on the computer that I have the card installed. Let's go ahead and open up your browser of choice, minus Chrome. We're gonna open this up and we're gonna go to blackmagicdesign.com. We're gonna go up here to support. All right, and we're gonna come over here to capture and playback. And let's scroll down a little bit here. And we're gonna get the latest and greatest. And right now, as of recording this, this is 12.5. Let's go ahead, this is a Windows system. We go ahead and just download the drivers. And it should only take a second to get that stuff installed. We'll download it. All righty, so we got everything downloaded and installed. If we come over here to our programs, go to Black Magic Design, and now we're gonna have an application called Black Magic Desktop Video Setup. Let's go ahead and open this up. 
And as you can see, the card is detected, but you see it shows four times. So it acts as four independent capture devices. So one, two, three, and four. So let's go in the settings again, and let me show you exactly what I'm talking about, where sometimes this can be a little problematic. So inside of here, let's go into our, we're gonna go to the first one, we're gonna go to our disc, and you see we have display full frame video output. Do you wanna display a single field on video output? Honestly, I really don't touch a lot of these. Um, playback, do you wanna display a black, um, output when no video is playing. Do you want to freeze the frame? That is your preference. During capture, um, when you're bringing in video, do you want to video output displays the input? Yes, I want to do that. Um, you have some other settings down here for when the video is converted, your SDI output. Um, how, what level do you want it to be? A and B. Personally, I leave it at normal. Um, when you have 1080p, H D and 2K um, outputs, do you want to do progressive and all this other good stuff? You have your reference input. I really don't mess with that. You have your conversion. So it does give you some other stuff. So if you are bringing in some input, you can convert it um, to, um, to different standards if you want, SD to HD, HD or 720p to SD, 1080p to SD. And you also can do a conversion on the output if you want to. All right, now this is the connectors where I'm talking about where one and two are actually shared. I wanna come in here and separate these. That's me, because I want to use every single one of these as an input. So I'll set that to one, and that's it. Now I save that. Now we're gonna go to our next one, and we're just gonna come over here to connectors. And as you can see, our second connector is actually three. So it's one, three. I actually had it wrong. I said one, four, but it's one, three, two, four, which is weird. But anyway, we're going to set those to the individual ones as well. And then by default, the rest of them should have been set appropriately. So we go to connectors on number three. As you see, now that's two. So it's, excuse me, it's one, three, two, four. I think I did say that. So two is set. And we go to four, four set. That's the main thing that messed me up. And I believe the last one is the output, but we're gonna go ahead and get that done and show you how to do that as well too. All right, so now that we got that, let me go ahead and connect my cameras over SDI and I'm gonna connect that to our um, new, uh, if I can spit it out, the DeckLink Duo 2, and we're gonna run OBS so you can see how it works as well too. All right, so now we got our two cameras. I only have two PTZs that have SDI out, so that is this one and then the one behind me, the BZB gear. So let's go ahead and open up our OBS software. Now, when you install the software, this is brand new. I have not configured it. That's why the wizard comes up. When you install the Blackmagic software, it actually installs a... Um, component in OBS. So let's go over to this. And we're going to cancel the setup. And when you install it, if we go to tools, you'll see that we have a Decklink output. That's one of the components that was installed. Decklink captions, that's new. I don't even know what that is. That's really new. Don't know what that is. We'll come back to that. But we know the software is installed because when we add our source, you'll see we have a specific black magic device. Do not do the typical video capture device when you're using one of these deck links because it has a component specifically made for the black magic devices. So let's go ahead and add one. And you're going to add four of them because they act as four independent capture devices. So I'll just say this is, I don't know. Um, um, deck link duo one, something like that. And let's, oops, let's copy that so we can keep that name consistent. We're okay. And now we're going to pick our device. And as you can see, we have four of them. So let's pick one. And I think I might be plugged into the wrong one, but let's go to our next one. I think that is one. Three and okay, four is so I got it backwards. So four is what that 
the back camera is, so that's good. Let's okay this. And now that I think about it, the other camera that I'm using to my right right here, that does not support 1080p over, over SDI. So let me actually log into that camera and we're gonna make a change to that camera so that we can get an image here. All right, we're restarting that camera. So now we got that one, this camera set up, and actually let's rename that because we now know that's actually four that we're pointing to. All right, camera has been restarted and that is input four. Now let's add another one. Again, we're going back to the black magic device. I think this is two. We can always change the name. Let's go to two and there we go. So there's our signal. And there we go. So we have device number two that's connected. That's this one. And then if we, and actually let's minimize it so we can actually see both at the same time. That's one, let's make this bigger here. And then let's open up the other one here. And there we go. Let's shrink this one down. So as you can see, we have two independent inputs that are coming in and they do bring in audio on both channels. So um, I'm thankfully, I'm not sending any audio in here, but as you can see, it is gonna process and let's actually, like I said, this is a completely new version of OBS. So I like to defaultly turn off my audio here. This is global audio. And then let's set my output. I want to do 1080 and I'm gonna do it at, I'm gonna do this at 60 frames a second. All right, so there we go. Both, as you can see, both of them are live, capturing everything. Now, this is a beast of a system right now. So, but right now, I'm not really leveraging. I'm actually barely using 0.1% of the uh, of my CPU in this. But again, really cool that you can actually set this up. So now you got to think about this. With this card doing like this, you can make a scene for each one. So let's say now. <sighs> Where would I use this? This is where if you really want to do everything in OBS, you want to do everything in vMix or whatever streaming software that this is compatible with, and you don't want to ATEM or any switcher in any way, shape, or form, you can do everything through the software. Again, the ministry that I built this for, they use nothing, um, I think it's OBS or vMix. I forgot which one, but they just use the software to control everything. And they don't have to worry about any independent. They have one system that handles everything. That is a great option. Again, if you're looking for something that has SDI connections, you can go as well too. Now at $495, you are right around the same price as an ATEM SDI. Or the SDI ISO is maybe around $200 more. So you need a computer to run this. But again, it is a great option. So I hope y'all like that really straightforward, especially knowing that setting that you have to change um, when you unlink the SDI so they act as the input and the output. That's for like if you are having a camera operator and they're sending the signal from the camera, but they have a program feed that's going back like the studio camera pros give you an input so they can actually see what's actually being broadcast live. So anyway, Great card, have a link down below if you're interested. Let me know if you have any questions because I mean, this is in my collection right now. So um, we can always make some other stuff and other videos with this based on if y'all have any input or any questions about it. So if you like this type of content, appreciate a like, consider subscribing, hit that bell. That way you get notified when we come out with other videos to help modernize your media ministry. Thanks for watching folks, this is AJ. Catch you on the next video, later. <music>